few of my devotions have been on the book of Ephesians. I spoke about inheritance, I spoke about light and darkness, and in Ephesians 6, the last chapter of Ephesians, Paul is pulling together the threads of his great letter. So he speaks about our relationships with others, protecting ourselves from the desires of Satan to defeat us in our faith and how to protect ourselves with the full armour of God. And finally, a commendation for the man who will carry the letter to Ephesus. So this man is being sent from Paul overseas to the city of Ephesus with two letters. So we go right to the end of the book of Ephesians, at the end of chapter 6, and we think about a man called Tychicus. And it says in verse 21, Tychicus, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, I will tell you everything so that you may also know how I am and what I'm doing. I'm sending him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Tychicus is one of these people mentioned four times in the New Testament. Perhaps we might say that he is an unsung hero of the Bible. The big people get the prominence but in the background are those doing much of the spade work. The Apostle Paul could encourage such people, people to stand by him in adversity. In Acts 20 we get an inkling of such a group of people and we think that Tychicus might have been amongst them. Paul preaches, he is attacked, he is slandered, people speak behind his back, but he still has his supporters. One of these, Tychicus, is there, always there, a background believer, willing and helpful, trustworthy and true in adversity. Such people are the backbone of any church, men and women of faith, and we thank God for them. Our friend Tychicus must still have suffered the long weary journeys and the jeers and taunts of the crowd, the cold nights and the church politics. He must have thought occasionally, is it worth it? But then he pressed on. He kept going. He must have felt that this was God's work for him. Our Tychicus was a good man and stood by Paul. Although he is not mentioned by name, it seems certain that he went with Paul to Jerusalem and then in Colossians chapter 4, Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I'm sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. So he goes with Onesimus. Onesimus was a, an escaped slave who had become a Christian. He seems to have been in prison at some point with Paul and Paul had witnessed to him. And two letters go from Paul, firstly to the church in Colossae and also a letter to Philemon who was the slave master of Onesimus and also a Christian. 
So all kinds of questions arise. Tetricus is given a really tricky job, so he must have been bracing himself for a difficult conversation. We can read Paul's excellent letter to Philemon in the Bible. We do not know the outcome, but we feel that Onesimus must have been accepted back. But Tychicus is regarded highly and trusted to cope with difficult conversations. His characteristics are mentioned by Paul. He is a trustworthy deliverer of news. In the days when it would be mainly word of mouth, he was reliable. He was a dear brother. That is a wonderful expression. When many had deserted Paul, he was a dear brother, a constant friend, we might say. He was a faithful minister. He had been well taught in the scriptures. He knew the theology of Paul and was well able to de deliver Bible truth to the church. Without the compiled Bible as we know it, churches could easily drift into false teaching so people like Tychicus were invaluable. Paul would be confident in the ministry. He is also a fellow servant in the Lord. There is no hierarchy here. Fellow Christians fulfilling the commission of Christ. Paul is giving him a definite mission. I'm sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he might encourage your hearts. That is a great thing to have somebody like that, somebody who can explain the scriptures and bring encouragement. The worried Colossians must have been concerned about Paul and the other friends, so he brings much comfort I think the Colossians would see this as an answer to prayer and give thanks to God. In these days we could all emulate Tychicus, be his kind of people, bringers of comfort, remain in close fellowship with each other and faithful ministers of the word. He is given another difficult task that we read of in Titus chapter 3 verse 12. He is to go to Crete to relieve Titus. In Crete some had become Christians, but the island had a bad reputation, and there, is, there he is to work with these new believers in this difficult situation. And then again in 2 Timothy 4 verse 12, Paul mentions Tychicus as being, when he is being sent to Ephesus. So of course that brings us back in a full circle to the first passage that we read. It represented long Mediterranean journeys. We read of it in an instant, but it must have been journeys lasting months over stormy seas and bandit infested landscape. I do believe that we can admire this man who lived so long ago and his faithful personality. Central to all of this is Jesus. Tychicus was a faithful brother, not just faithful to Paul, but faithful to Christ. And that is the most important thing, that we, that we remain faithful to him, that we trust him, we believe in him, we do what he expects us to do, Wherever God plans for us to go and leads us, we can find a good example in the life of a good and faithful servant. While I was uh, preparing the message on Tychicus, there was a, a song from Believer's Hymn Book which was going around in my mind. It's number 229 in Believers and uh, Norman used to sing it quite often as a solo 
It's called Praise the Lord and Leave Tomorrow in Thy Loving Father's Hands. I'll, pr I'll play three verses of it. It's to the tune Cor Corinth. There are other hymns that we sing to that tune, but I think it's a lovely tune and the words are quite expressive. Thank you. 